the vaccines versus the variants. And even though the vaccines are now coming into Canada by the millions, 2 million coming this week from Pfizer, more from Moderna finally, the first arrival of the one-shot Johnson & Johnson vaccine. And even as provinces like Ontario and Quebec are lowering the age of vaccine eligibility, 18 plus in May, it's all too late to stop the third wave from ravaging much of the country, a wave driven by the deadlier international variants of the virus. The military is now helping out in Nova Scotia and Ontario. Heavy restrictions remain in BC. Alberta is on COVID fire in the north and in cities like Calgary. Much of the country is in danger. And where did the variants come from? Well, obviously through the borders. And that's why some premiers are asking the prime minister to take tougher border measures. On the other side, the United States is starting to open up, raising another question. Will Canada roll out a vaccine passport, both for international and domestic travel? Let's find out. Hi, right, joining me now is the health minister, Patty Heidi. Always a pleasure to have you on the program. Uh, let's talk about border restrictions. As you know, premiers like Doug Ford in Ontario want much stronger border controls, not only at airports, but at roads. I know you keep saying that the number of travel related cases are low, less than 2%, but minister, the variants have got here through travel. These are international uh, um, variants that come in through travel. Is it disingenuous to suggest that travel related cases have had a minimal impact on the multiplication of the spread? Well, listen, uh, Evan, what I can tell you is that we are seeing some of the lowest travel volumes that we've seen really in a very long time. And in fact, the majority of travelers now would be considered essential travelers. Those are the workers that are crossing the borders for a variety of different reasons. The truck drivers delivering our foods, the uh, uh, critical service infrastructure workers, the healthcare workers that sometimes work in a variety of different ways uh, across the border. And so, um, you know, at this point, that represents represents almost 80% of all travel. But Minister, I I'm going to read you from an epidemiologist, Colin Furness. He said, consider that every single case of the B117 variant, it, which is crashing our healthcare system, is a travel attributable case. The variant came on a plane. And he said that your government, I'm quoting him, has a quote, disastrous misunderstanding of the relationship between travel and communicable diseases. A small percentage of something is catastrophic because it quickly multiplies Applies. In other words, yeah, a few cases, but the variants are different. They multiply. Most cases in Canada now are of the variants. They came from travel. Isn't that an indictment of the current border system? Well, I mean, I, what I'd say is across the country, we see very different epidemiological patterns, and we're all in the same country. So on the East Coast, as you know, uh, many of those provinces have done, you know, extremely well. And they've done extremely well because they've taken this virus, as you know, every step of the way extremely seriously. Look at Nova Scotia, 80 cases, and indeed they shut things down so that they could get a handle on things. What we know about the variants is, yes, uh, some of these variants are more infectious, but what works for COVID works for the variants as well and so the modeling has always predicted that if we let go of the measures too quickly that we would see a surge in cases in fact very early modeling last year showed that and that's what we've seen and so we've got to stay low, laser focused on reducing transmission in our communities that's where the gain is now but but miss i gotta push back your example actually cuts the other way there are no international flights landing in the atlantic provinces and guess what they have the lowest number of variants uh, other provinces had flights and border crossings. They had the variants. A lot of those provinces also had the same social distancing measures as the Atlantic provinces. Isn't the Atlantic provinces, the Atlantic bubble, I know they're suffering in Nova Scotia now, but isn't that example of exactly this? No international flights, tighter borders, fewer variants. What I'll we'll say, uh, Evan, is that, as I said, now what we are seeing in terms of travel is the large volume being related to essential travel. And these are the things that keep Canada running. We've always known that we would right. need to have some degree of travel at our border to keep our country right. running. And we have some of the strictest measures in the world, Evan, and that's why you are seeing really yeah. a non-essential travel at its lowest levels ever. We've got hundreds of thousands of people still crossing the border. Yes, some are essential. Truck, I get that. But a lot aren't. People, and you know that. You've seen the evidence. I know some is anecdotal, but some is data-driven. What's essential? Why are people flying to the U.S.? 
premiers are saying, stop it, shut it down, do like the Atlantic province. If you've got hundreds of people, hundreds and hundreds on 65 international flights, at this point when speed matters, when the variant is a different disease than the first phase, and we're getting overwhelmed here, at what point do you, as the health minister says, shut it down? What I will say is this, Evan, we need to stay laser focused on where people are getting sick and they are getting sick in community. They are getting sick in at work. They are getting sick in crowded housing situations. That's where people are getting sick. And we need to work together at all levels of government, as we have been doing, to stay laser focused on that, reducing transmission, getting people vaccinated so we can save lives, stop the spread. And that's the work that we've been doing together. We can't get distracted. Right. We have to stay focused on but what's the, going to so, actually sorry. work, which is reducing transmission in community. I want to just quickly go to vaccine passports. I know the EU is proposing a digital green certificate to allow EU residents to travel across the block. They've also signaled to the US that fully vaccinated Americans may be able to travel to Europe this summer. Uh, Canada is not on that list. Uh, how, the Prime Minister's hinted, we're going to get on this. How close is Canada to giving us the details of a vaccine passport? We're working with international partners now, um, Evan. As you know, the world is trying to figure out how to restore international travel. We're not the only ones having conversations about borders and what they mean and how to protect citizens from the importation of the virus. And so that conversation is very alive at the G7 table, at which I said I met with my G7 counterparts this week, as a matter of fact. And um, the consensus is that we need to have some sort of common way to be able to uh, quickly credential people's certif right. certification of vaccination. We know there are a lot of different kinds of vaccines around the world and we want obviously Canadians to be able to participate in international travel so I can reassure Canadians that no matter what those requirements will be we'll have Canadians ready when the time is right to travel of course it's a good reminder to say now is not quite ready not quite the time yet okay just and I'm going to pick up on when we're going to find out that time is but minister uh, what about domestic travel will there be a, a, a domestic uh vaccine passport, to go to concerts, to go to federally regulated spaces, to move from inter -pro province to province. Will the federal government impose a, uh, a vaccine passport domestically? No, there's no intention to impose a domestic uh, vaccination passport at the federal level, but I will remind uh, people that uh, certain settings will require vaccination as they always do. So, for example, schools require certain childhood immunizations. Some universities and colleges may require vaccination. There might be requirements for certain workplaces, and those are all, as right. you know, determined at local and provincial levels. You know, people are frustrated. They need some actual tangible targets. They're looking at the United States, where the Center for Disease Control, the CDC, issued a comprehensive guidance on what people who have been vaccinated, as millions of Canadians have done already, what they can do. Uh, you know, they said public health recommendation for fully vaccinated people. Uh, they've been told they can resume domestic travel without taking a test, for example. They no longer need to self-isolate after arriving back from an international destination. Why can't Canadians have that same guidance? Uh, well, listen, the Canadian um, approach is to be, uh, you know, very certain that we are uh, working with provinces and territories to understand their own epidemiology. Of course, it's two things, uh, Evan. It's the, the percentage of Canadians that are vaccinated, and it's the extent of disease that's being transmitted in communities. We will have guidance out for Canadians very shortly about what they can do with one dose or two doses of the vaccine. All right, uh, Minister Hyde, I got to leave it there. Always good to have you on the program. Thank you so much. Thank you very much, Evan. Take care.